the midnight cry. Lord, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to receive God's message of love, grace, and mercy. Midnight is a time of deliverance. God is in God's holy temple. Dear friends and family, welcome to our online service. We are so glad for your presence and uh, your time. We appreciate you being here than anywhere else at this time. Please enjoy this service that we have put together. We have a beautiful children's message, a congregational video, and good music, worship time, and a good sermon. Please enjoy this service. We also pray together for our community, for the safety of everyone in our community and in our neighborhood. Please pray with me. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you asking for your help. Bless our service. Bless the service that we have put together. Lord Jesus, protect our community, protect and safeguard everyone in our society, in our church. We also pray for the unrest political situation in our nation we ask your father that you continue to pour out your grace and your mercy pour out your holy spirit and bring calmness bring bring uh, bring peace and prosperity to our nation we give you all the glory and honor in jesus precious name we offer this prayer amen and amen please enjoy this service everyone happy Sunday today in our scripture reading Jesus is telling us a story and in that story the lesson is about being prepared can you kids tell me is there anything you do to help be prepared in case there's a tornado or a fire at school or at home go to the basement in a basement talk to Maha go to the basement go to the basement but at school, we don't go to the basement. We go to like backpack lockers or something. 
where there's no windows. But I wish we did go to the basement. Get out of the house as quick as possible and go to a fire spot. A safe fire spot away from the house. For a tornado at our house, we go down to our basement so then the tornado can't get us. We'll let this, this fire and make this beep, beep, beep sound um, very loud and, and at school. So when you have to uh, walk very fast, they have to do it and go outside. We do drills at school in case there's a fire that happens at school and we make pla and we should make sure that we make plans at home. Um, dad and the parents. Very good, you guys. I am so thankful that you are prepared in case of a tornado or fire at school or at home. That's wonderful. Well, again, in our scripture reading today, Jesus is telling us a story, and the story is to teach us that we need to be prepared. And in this story, there are 10 bridesmaids, and they are all carrying oil lamps. This is an oil lamp I borrowed from my mom, and an oil lamp needs oil. And so you open this container here, and you put oil into it, and then you can light the fire. Now, if you run out of oil and your flame goes out, it can't restart without oil. And in our story today, five of the bridesmaids, they came prepared, they brought extra oil just in case they ran out and their fire went out. But the other five did not bring oil and they were not prepared. And so it took a while for the bridegroom, who they were waiting for, to get there. And the bridesmaids fell asleep. And when they woke up, their lights were out and they were out of oil. So the five who brought extra, they were able to restart their lamp and they followed the bridegroom into the wedding. But the five who did not bring extra oil did not get to go in and the door closed. In this story, Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bridesmaids. And someday we will meet Jesus face to face and he wants us to be prepared because we don't know when that day will come. And the good news is all we have to do to be prepared is to ask Jesus into our heart and then we are ready. Will you guys pray with me about that? Thank you so much. You can bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God, we know one day we'll get to meet you face to face. Help us get ready for that wonderful day. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Thank you so much everyone and have a wonderful week. I don't want to hear anymore, teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore, give me a vision. That you could move this heart to be set apart. I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror. And I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar. I can't waste a day, I can't stay the same I want to be different, I want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains is a fire so bright The whole world could see that there's something different Come and finish what you started
I wanna be different, I wanna be changed, and all of me is gone, and all that remains is a fire so bright, the whole world can see that there's something different, so come and be different, I just wanna be different, so could you be different? Again, everyone. Today for our congregation message, we are very thankful Kim Blick and staff invited our church family to come and check out the San Cody Lake and Resort. My family got to go as well as I know other congregation members and so I've combined some of the photos and videos taken so that we can share with you what you'll get to see if you have the opportunity to go and experience San Cody Lakes and Resort. Now, if you need a golf cart to get around, you can call Doug Doty or Carla Doty and they will help arrange that for your visit. Otherwise, you're welcome to just come and park there and walk around and see all of the beautiful things there are to see. So, here is our video of what we saw and I hope you enjoy it. Please pray with me. Lord, we are stubborn and impatient. We want to know everything, but very often we are limited by our own ignorance. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and help us. 
guide us and comfort us. We still struggle with our own calculations and we neglect to have more oil for our lamps. We are not continually ready for your return. We fall in your, we fail in our judgment. We name those people who are near and dear to us. We ask you, O oh Lord, for you to send your healing power. Their needs are great and our abilities are limited. We need you more than ever because you are God of possibilities. We ask for your healing power, love and blessings for them. Their needs are greater and our abilities are limited. But we know that with your love, all things are possible. O oh Lord, there never seems to be enough time to do all the things that are demanded of us. Schedules become uh, overcrowded. We live by the clock. We think we are ready for all events that will come our way. But we are rarely ready for you and for your return. We have moved to you to a time on our weekly calendars. Yet you are eternal God who has always loved us and being ready to receive us. Give us such courage and perseverance that we may faithfully proclaim your love to all the world. Make us ready to receive you now in this place and everywhere. In the deepest darkness, in the time when all seems lost, we are not lost to you and you alone. God call us to ready to serve you and serve you in your kingdom. We pray this prayer in the name of one who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and Amen. Good morning. Today's reading, the parable of the ten virgins, comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil and jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There might not be enough oil for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Midnight Cry Gospel according to Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 13 Wedding are emotionally heightened events in one's life. Everyone involved invests time, energy, creativity, resources, love, and hope towards the marriage ceremony, the function. There are uh, tears at weddings and profound hope, but also sometimes anger, frustration, and resentment. Yet Jesus chose this most human emotionally loaded event as the context for a parable talking about the kingdom of God. Jesus starts in uh, his public ministry 
in a wedding feast where there was a lack of wine. Jesus used this parable to talk about his second coming. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is going to be like this. The parable of the ten bridesmaids speaks profoundly to a fast-paced 21st century audience. What differentiates or distinguishes the foolish versus the wise in their readiness for the bridegroom? Even in the face of delay, the wise are prepared for the delay. In the midst of life's joy, pain, ease and adversity, in drug and boredom, the faith of the wise remain enough. Waiting or waiting, waiting or delay is a difficult thing. Waiting to speak to a customer service representative, showing to uh, slowing down f uh, to 25 miles per hour for a school zone, slow internet speed, waiting at the doctor's office, and uh, this week waiting for the final election result. Yet waiting is a difficult thing. Yet in this generation, we have experienced innovation in increasing the speed of everything. Fast communication, travel, fast food, answers to prayers, weight loss and advancement in every area with the speed of doing things. Are we there yet? Is what we hear from those traveling with children back in their cars. They will be, you know, right after you move your car out of your garage, they're going to ask, are we there yet? This unique parable of the wise and foolish preceding the wider context of end time discourse in the Matthewan Gospel. The allegory of the bridegroom represents Jesus at his eschatological coming. The maidens stand for members of the church. The wedding banquet stand for the fully realized reign of God and the rejected foolish maidens indicate the final judgment. This, is, this in its true sense represents the nature of the church. The church that consists of true authentic disciples versus pseudo disciples. A distinction will be revealed only in the final judgment. Keep in mind the Matthewan community was struggling with the delayed parousia or the coming of Christ in his glory. Having the oil in your lamp shows the responsible deeds of discipleship and the work of love and mercy. On the one hand, there is an urgency in preparing for the Lord's coming. At the same time, it is foolish to put off obtaining the oil, the deeds of discipleship. Keep awake! Even while you are sleeping, watch the sign of the time. Keep your light shining before others while you are sleeping. Continuing in community, doing the deeds of grace and mercy. Offer forgiveness, spreading the message of justice and peace. Have you ever run out of gas on the road? Or do you ever run out of, out of battery power? Some kind of unverified study online tells that half a million drivers run out of gas every year. Flat tire, dead batteries, misplaced keys, and running out of gas ranks high right up there in, in the reasons why people call for roadside assistance. With all the technological advancement, people still run out of fuel and are stuck on the roadside. Jesus is inviting us in this parable to be ready on season and out of season. The parable of the ten virgins are the text talks about them as five of them were foolish and five were wise. We hear a midnight cry from the foolish. If you are ready, you can awaken to enjoy the celebration. You don't know until you are awake that you were sleeping. 
in the middle of the night the door was shut this is a wake-up call this passage talks uh, by talk, you know talks by theology and as an eschatological passage talking about the end times and preachers like me don't preach eschatology or last things very often because I'm going to be around for a long time and if I make any mistakes and it don't go very well for me in my preaching career or for you the midnight is when sleep is the deepest and awakening most unwelcomed and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go you out to meet him what is the midnight cry when midnight comes you discover the difference between theory and reality between fake pole and true victory midnight is the darkest hour before day for some it will be a time when they lose their inheritance whereas for others it is a time to receive their inheritance their joy it is a turning point from one season to another midnight is a time for blessing a turning point for bigger and brighter things midnight is when the wait is over when your hope come true a turning point for a breakthrough of bigger and brighter things for God. Midnight, midnight is also a time of judgment. In Exodus chapter 11 verse 1 says, Moses said, Thus says the Lord about the midnight, I will go out into the midst of the Egyptians. All the firstborn in the land of the Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones. All the firstborn of the cattle as well. The Israelites at the same midnight was a dream coming true. Deliverance after 430 years of bondage and slavery. Finally, they were set free, liberated from all the abuse, disappointment, frustrations, poverty and lack that they had to endure from generation to generation. It is during the time of unexpected, a time of weakness, a tiredness, a thinking about giving up, a time of sweeping, a midnight arrive. The Egyptians, the same midnight hours, brought nightmares, death and lows, crying and tears. But for the people of Israel, it was a time of blessing. Midnight is their breaking point for freedom, joy, blessing and liberation. Tomorrow there will be a consequence for every decision you take today. Are you, are we a church that is sleeping? Are we in slumber? I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. It is closer than ever. I can hear the trumpet sound, a mighty cry. We will be going home. Jesus steps out on a cloud and calling his children, everyone who are dead in Christ and who remains alive, quickly will be transformed and changed. The Lord will come as a thief in the night. It is true that the bridegroom is Christ. He comes now to judge, to punish and reward. We must be ready and prepared for his return. You don't want to be a recipient of a midnight cry. It's a warning sign. When we study the scriptures, there are remarkable events occurred at midnight. For some, death came at midnight. Life and freedom came for others at midnight. Midnight also represents the darkest hour of one's life. David the psalmist says these words about the midnight. At midnight I will raise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. In Psalms 119 verse 62, we read the yoke of bondage and limitation and yoke of the enemy is destroyed at midnight. There is another midnight deliverance is recorded in the New Testament at Philippi. Paul and Silas received God's mighty deliverance. They were beaten up, constrained with chains, put into the inner division of an underground prison chamber. 
when they started to singing sing and praise God suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's uh, bands were loosed it's a time for freedom and celebration the Lord will move at midnight to set the captive free in the name of Jesus when Jesus talks about the persistent prayer he talks about a story and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go into him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey he, journey is uh, come to me and I have nothing to set before him and he uh, from within shall answer and say Trub trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed and I cannot raise and give thee I say unto you though he will not raise and give him because he he he, he is his friend yet because of his uh, importunity he will raise and give him as many as he needeth if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Dear friends, are you going through a midnight? Are you going through a midnight cry? Let me promise you the time is not come yet. The bridegroom did not knock on the door yet. He is going to come in his glory. But midnight also is a time not for sleeping. It is to be awake and it is a time when we work for the Lord and his kingdom. Dear friends, I leave you with this question. Are you ready for this midnight? Are you part of the one who are celebrating during the midnight or are you one that's going to be left out in the midnight? Are you part of the cry or are you part of the celebration? The choice is yours. May God help you to be wise wise in serving him serving for his kingdom and then in fact receiving god's mercy and grace may god bless you with this words please pray with me god our heavenly father we come before you asking for you to help us bless us be with us and guide us protect us and take care of us help us to not to be a part of the foolish um, uh, foolish ones Help us to be part of the wise ones, O oh God. We don't want to be rejected. We don't want it to be ignored. We want to be people who are ready to serve you, ready to work for your kingdom. It's not time to wait alone. Rather, it is a time to create your influence in this world. Help us to do that. Help us to serve you. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer.
receive this benediction. God has called and chosen you to be a witness for Him. Witness to hope, peace in God's world. Be alert while you are asleep. Wait for His coming. Go in peace and in the same healing, reconciling love and peace that will surpass all understanding. Go and serve the Lord your God in all that you do. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and every day. Amen and Amen.